review, Chevy Colorado ZR2 shocks, rocks, and sandblasts rivals. Rock left, going to straddle it, I called out to my driving partner, Shad Borch, director of Chevrolet Communications. Driving about 45 miles per hour and focused on that rock I somehow missed another rock on my right. Bang! The radio crackled with a message from truck 99. Truck 18, your dog tracking. You should probably pull over. I was piloting truck 18, a blue 2023 Chevrolet Colorado ZR2 on a three-day drive from Las Vegas to Reno using much of the 2023 best in the desert Vegas to Reno race course. I had heard and felt a boom from the rear end and saw an alert for a low right rear tire on the digital gauge cluster, but the truck was still soldiering on. Crunch metal isn't the largest worry when off-roading, what's broken behind it is. Chevy Colorado ZR2, now boulder friendly, sort of. I was confused. The rock I straddled shouldn't have made contact with the bash plates. I got out and saw that the driver's side rear tire had too much camber, the right rear quarter panel was dented, the right rear Goodyear was flat, and the right rear wheel and tire now sat farther back in the wheel well. Looking underneath, events became clear. A rock had made contact with the dented but still intact aluminum drive shaft just ahead of where it slides into the rear end. The drive shaft spun the rock back to the right, hitting where the U-bolts hold the axle and leaf spring together. It sheared the pin, bolt, that centers the mounting bracket top plate with the U-bolts, axle, and leaf spring. This allowed the axle to slide back about 3 inches on the passenger side, bending the front U-bolt while shoving the rear U-bolt off the top plate. It was all still in one piece, and the axle was fine. Henry Kanan, GM tech who spends his days fixing the stuff the engineering team breaks during development, was on hand, but the chase truck didn't have a replacement pin or U-bolts. Everyone agreed the truck could drive out with a spare tire, but the axle should be shoved back into place. Time for Mac Jiva level repairs. The rock hit the aluminum drive shaft first, denting, but not destroying it. After a few failed attempts to get the rear axle aligned, Kanan said, this is going to sound sketchy, but we might be able to do it with the truck. Kanan removed the drive shaft, making the ZR2 a front-wheel drive vehicle momentarily, and Chevrolet performance manager of performance integration Tim Dimitrio put the truck in full low, locked the front locker, shifted into reverse, and backed into a rock place behind the right rear tire. We all watched as the axle slid forward and back into place. Miracles never cease. Kanan attempted to straighten the U-bolts with a metal mallet, but little progress was made. Kanan couldn't straighten the U-bolts using a boulder with a metal mallet, so he slid the U-bolts in backwards so they pulled against the axle to keep it better centered. That was important because there was no replacement centering pin. He also installed a steel drive shaft available through Chevrolet Performance. With a spare wheel and tire, the truck was back in one piece. We turned around and drove out the way we came in. With the truck back in one piece it drove out and down the highway. On the highway, Dimitrio cracked over the radio, let me know if that thing pulls, vibrates, or doesn't feel right, truck 18. Amazingly, it drives, fine. Seems to pull a smidge to the left if anything, but otherwise it's fine, I responded. We met up with the rest of the trucks at a scheduled pit stop, and there I swapped into the sand dune metallic backup truck. That night in Fallon, Nevada, the Chevy team went to the local Napa Auto Parts store and bought two U-bolts and a pin. Dimitrio said they could fix the truck with less than $10 worth of parts, but I continued in the backup truck. After five days, four hotels, 350 miles off pavement in the desert, and about 400 to 500 more miles on pavement, that's the worst, and only, thing that happened to any of the ZR2S aside from flat tires, and the truck was still drivable. It's clear the second-generation Chevrolet Colorado ZR2 has morphed into the automaker's flagship off-roader. It's not as big as Chevy's two other ZR2S, the Silver Adu 1500 and Silver Adu HD, but that's a bonus for off-roading, and the Colorado ZR2's capability sets a new benchmark for the current and looming competition. Colorado ZR2, good shocks, hardware, and specs.
The 2023 Chevy Colorado ZR2 is more than just a base Colorado with some off-road parts added to the mix. The Colorado's hardware and specs let it brush off jumps, rocks, most of them, ruts, mud, water, silt, sand, snow, and everything else we encountered in the desert. The new ZR2 rides on a model-specific frame with additional reinforcements for loads and twist and revised geometry to mount the rear shocks outboard by the wheels instead of inboard like the rest of the standard 2023 Chevrolet Colorado lineup. This change makes the truck more stable on and off-road and protects the shock mounts from damage while off-roading, should you or someone like me tag a rock. I don't recommend it. Dimitrio confirmed I would have ripped the shock mount off the old truck. The new ZR2 also rolls on a 3.0-inch wider track and has 3.0-inch lift compared to the base Colorado. The numbers speak for themselves with 10.7 inches of ground clearance, a 9.9 inches of front and 11.6 inches of rear suspension travel. These changes contribute to a 24.6-degree breakover angle, a 38.3-degree approach angle, and a 25.1-degree departure angle. The ZR2's approach and departure angles beat those of the current Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro, but Toyota's shorter wheelbase pays dividends in the form of a slightly better breakover angle at 26.6 degrees. We'll have to see where the new Tacoma TRD Pro and Ranger Raptor fit into the equation when they arrive. The Jeep Gladiator Mojave bests the ZR2's approach and departure angles, but the Jeep's longer wheelbase hurts its breakover angle. The ZR2's approach, departure, and breakover angles are also all better than those of the Ford F-150 Raptor, regardless of whether it's on 35s or 37s, and the Ram 1500 TRX. Among the best off-roading parts on the second-generation ZR2 are its Multimatic Dynamic Suspension Spool Valve DSSV, shocks, which debuted on the 2017 Colorado ZR2. These gold-sleeved shocks have been upgraded with the rod from the larger Silver Adu 1500 ZR2 for more damping force and a new tune for more control at speed. The passive dampers have the ability to control the ZR2 while attacking a long sweeper on the road or jumping over a cattle grate off-road. I did both during Chevy's drive and came away impressed with the body control and smoothness created by the DSSVs. My back should need a chiropractor after those 350 miles of off-roading, but I'm not even taking Tylenol. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.